I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, full disclaimer, my cat will not stop meowing. So if you hear him, uh, just ignore him. <laughs> That's okay. Just as long as my dogs don't hear it and then they start barking and then all of a sudden we stop communicating and there's just <laughs> animal chat. You know what? That sounds just as amazing to me, but yeah. not for today. <laughs> mm -hmm. How are you? I'm doing good. It's actually, I was, I wanted to do this outside, but we have landscapers at the house right now working on some, you know, like they're planting trees and rearranging what we have outside. So there's a lot of noise. I got it. Yeah. I wanted to do it outside, but the Wi-Fi just barely wouldn't reach. So mm. the lighting, unfortunately, is subpar today, but um, it's okay. I tried to get like some of outside, but yeah, yeah, no, look at us. We both have windows right next to us. Yes, yes. Your lighting is much more even, though. But then again, you're a professional in that sense. I have no idea how to work <laughs> the stage or any of that. I wish I was a lighting professional. <laughs> no, you are. And you've been doing awesome, awesome things lately, um, especially during quarantine. I wanted to take a minute just to applaud you for, um, you know, being so creative and productive and efficient during this time. I know it's hard, but you've really found super innovative ways to make sure your music is being shared and that people can still listen to you and even have a taste of the live show. So do you want to talk a little bit about your partnership with um, Boxcar first? Yeah. So um, it's it, like you said, it's been very difficult. Um, and me and my team have been trying to figure out ways to, you know, kind of make it through this whole situation we have going on in the world um but we figured out a way to kind of play live shows during this whole entire thing and it's with our partnership with boxcar they're hosting pop-up drive-in movie theaters and me and my sister actually had the idea we went to a drive-in movie theater one night and there was like a lot of you know time before the movie played and we said wouldn't it be great if we had somebody playing music while we waited for the movie to go on and then boom, the light bulb moment happened. Uh, and we got in contact with Boxcar. They thought it was a great idea and we've been doing it ever since. Yeah. No, it's, it's such a great idea. And I'm surprised more artists haven't, um, you know, jumped on the bandwagon, but maybe they will, or maybe they have, and I'm just not um, familiar with it. Cause I know it's still local in terms of where you actually go. So yeah. And also the, with, with Boxcar, unfortunately, um, which they would if they could, obviously, but they're, they're unable to compensate us for performing. So it really just uh, operates on tips, honestly, but it's, it's been good. You know, it's been good. It's been hard because everybody's dealing with difficulty, but at the end of the day, you know, not playing for money. Cause if I was playing for money, I'd definitely be doing something else. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So it's just, it's just really nice to finally get back out there and like see little kids smiling again, listening to the music and, you know, like, couples cuddling and it's just it's really good it's a really good vibe oh that's that's so sweet yeah unfortunately california is still well unfortunately but slash fortunately because we're being safe but anyway uh, we're still on a pretty heavy lockdown right now which uh i'm grateful for because uh we need it but it's unfortunate as well because i thrive of course on the arts and um you know going to concerts going to movies even so i'm glad that people such as yourself have been able to kind of bring that to us in, a, in different ways mm -hmm. oh you just froze but i think i i don't think you said anything did you no i didn't and, okay. and, and you you sped up like you froze also but then what you said sped up really quickly and i was Ooh. able to get it Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and another thing I want to talk about is you've released a few singles over the past few months. I love the Beatles vibe, by the way. I actually oh, you just, dig it? What? You dig it? I do. I actually, uh, just before this, I interviewed uh, some other people who, uh, Carly and Martina, and their sisters, and they're also inspired by the Beatles. So I'm like, it's a Beatles celebration day for me. So it's I had a Beatles celebration day. day. Yeah, they're great. And I think it's very kind of that, the Beatles vibes and kind of like that spiritual vibe um, for your new single. Um, and I actually think it's fascinated a lot of people um, with so much downtime. They've been very in tune with their souls, their bodies, their spirituality. And your song is kind of um, emphasizing that. Do you want to kind of talk about that? Yeah, 100%. I think the time that we've had, it being so such like a 
it gives you so much time to be introspective and and whereas you know you can look on the inside it garners your appreciation for what's kind of on the outside um i've i've i mean i've been doing psychedelics for a, for a long time now uh and i usually do them which is probably where the beatles inspiration comes from <laughs> yeah. um and for a very very long time i've had a deep uh deep connection with uh, the planet and trees and greener and you know all that stuff i just I, from it's sort of my religious uh oh can you hear me yes um it did the same thing it sped up but i heard what you said about like greenery and then something yeah. about relig religious religion yeah yeah well it's it's sort of this song is sort of my religious belief i i think religion is a beautiful thing and i think it adds such a great meaning to life um this is sort of the religion that i've kind of come to live by with my life which is the concept that when i die i will continue to expand into the universe and with you know ever expansion comes ever can condense condensation condensing you know, whereas you I don't get know the word, but I know what you mean. Yeah, exactly. I'd be able to, I'd be able to really say it if I was high right now. But you, get <laughs> you know, and I think I'm glad you bring that up because I think that um, CBD marijuana is um, being more destigmatized, especially during quarantine. I think people are seeing it as a medicine. I personally don't smoke, but I'm a huge advocate for CBD topical because mm -hmm. I have fibromyalgia. So it works wonders. Um, so, and, and I think, would you agree it's been destigmatized over the past few months? I don't know, maybe that's just here, but I've kind of noticed it. Absolutely. And I think, I think I've been, you know, smoking for a very long time. Uh, and, and I'd be foolish. I'd be lying if I said that I, I didn't start it recreationally, but I think I've gotten to a certain point in my life, you know, where I'm older now and, and I do it sort of as an inspirational kind of way to trigger nostalgia or life influence or you know there's a ton of reasons why why i do it but i also think the pros of it far outweigh the cons because honestly i just don't really see many cons to it yeah yeah and like i said i have not done it mainly because i'm scared um but i i do use cbd often so yeah cbd is fantastic I've seen it work wonders um, for people who smoke it. I've seen it work wonders for their, for chronic pain or for, um, you know, even anxiety and stress. So even though I don't do it necessarily, I'm a huge advocate for its benefits. And I'm glad that you can attest to that. Yeah. So, Come to I, me. I, I, have, I have all of the attesting. Yeah. And I don't look like the typical like person who would be like advocating for it, which makes it so funny. That's why I kept giving a million disclaimers. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I definitely don't look like a spokesperson for it, but I, I am to some extent. So <laughs> oh, I think it's super important that artists like yourself, um, you know, you do take advantage of the downtime you have during this time, but at the same time, you don't want to experience creative burnout. So how have you been kind of navigating that situation? Um, I'm not putting pressure on myself. Uh, I think that's it's, it's one thing to understand and be appreciative for the time that we have right now as a creative in quarantine. You know, you can, it's, it's very easy to tell yourself that you're not doing enough because you have so much time and, and, and you know, you're not waking up and I've never woken up with a schedule. I've always like woken up, driven to a show, played my show, driven to another show, you know, like the tour life. Um, so being in one place is difficult and I'm trying so hard to not put so much pressure on myself to be productive. And I think in turn, it's making me more productive. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm relaxed. I'm trying to create a relaxed environment, but uh, you know, I'd be lying if I said it was, it's been easy. It's been of incredibly course. difficult. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of my all time favorite quotes, I read this in a book and a professor said it and kind of ingrained it into my brain is downtime is productive time, which I mean, self-explanatory, but if you don't take the downtime to be productive in the sense that you're giving yourself downtime, then mm -hmm. your productive time is not going to be effective or yeah. productive. So it's, it's self-care and, and, and we're fortunate enough to be growing up in a generation that actually practices it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's a lot of things are becoming destigmatized, and femininity and masculinity are starting to intertwine finally, which is amazing. And yeah. like you know, self care is becoming super important, and in turn, it's going to create such a better creative world. I think. Oh yeah, of course. People I think. Action. Yeah, millennials, we got that down. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't sometimes take advantage of it because sometimes it can come off as lazy, but obviously that's not what it is intended to be. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and I know it's very um, difficult to film music videos right now and whatnot, but how have you also been navigating that? Because I know with your singles, you're, you're playing, you did release a music video, I think, right? Yes. Okay, I'm not mistaken. We DIY'd the whole thing. That's right, okay. Mm -hmm. We uh we used a drone. Uh, it's just about you know like like we were saying, just getting creative, trying to think of ideas and not forcing yourself to. Uh, it was fun. It was just like it, it was fun, and it's really hard, especially when you're trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve, which is essentially a point of sustainability through mm -hmm. a through an artistic craft. Um, it's really, really easy to stop having fun and start getting frustrated and like needing an answer. So we just, I'm, I've just been focusing on making sure that when I'm doing something creative, I'm having fun. And we did this DIY music video and it's shot with a drone and it's gorgeous and the coloring is phenomenal. And like the whole day we were, you know, drinking and laughing and having a good time and there was no seriousness based around it. And, and that's kind of how we've been going about you know, music videos and creative content and just generating more stuff. And I've been recording demos and just putting them on SoundCloud, which was never a part of the release plan that we had. And it's just, you know, just doing stuff. Yeah. I, I love that concept. Big props to you. I think that, um, a lot of times musicians, especially people who maybe are very, up and coming, just getting started. They think there's a formula because that's kind of what Hollywood has said. You get signed to a record, a uh, big company, you're with the top record label in the world, all this stuff. And simply that's not always the case. And it, I'm sure for you, it does pay off. I mean, you have a great team behind you, but you also have so much that you are still in control of. So I'm sure that that has also helped you to kind of express yourself and the ideas you want to put out. Yes, absolutely. We've, we've focused on and we've focused on making sure I, I've focused on making sure that the people who I'm working with, you know, are creative and appreciate the craft and, and there's no big wigs. There's no people who think they're better than the other. We're all in this, like for the mutual desire of having a good time and creating something that we think is good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no money hungry people here other than just hoping to be able to buy a meal and one day be able to like take care of a family at some point. Um, other than that, nobody is, nobody's grubby. And yeah. that's what I love. That's what I love about my team. That's what I love about creating a team. And I think a really important word that falls into play with most of the decisions that I make about like building a team is family and making sure that people approach it with the intent of, you know, family. Of course. Yeah. And I think that if you can have that approach, like as a family kind of vibe, it's a true testament to everyone's character as well and everyone's work ethic and their purpose for why they want to be involved in the first place. So again, so important. I don't know. I just love everything you've had to say. It's like, Super inspiring. I'm sure you get told that a lot, though. <laughs> I, I I actually don't. Not not as not not that often. But I appreciate it. Thanks. Oh Eva. well, then I'll speak for myself and a hundred other people then, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if a hundred other people had this conversation with you, they would feel the same way. So, yeah, I just wanted to recognize that because it's very. I think it's very powerful to kind of navigate the music industry in the way that you do. So. Thanks, Eva. I, I really appreciate that. Of course, of course. Um, so just a couple more things, if that's good with you. Yeah, I can talk all day. I got nothing going on. Awesome. I have work to do, but otherwise I would also talk all day. But maybe we can do like a part two in a couple months or something when you have more 
Release. Easy peasy. Okay. Next time I'm in California, we'll go grab a coffee and we'll do like an in-person one. I would love that. Uh, funny enough, I actually only started doing digital interviews when it was the only option. So in March of this year. So it's been different, but nothing beats in person. So as soon as it's safe, I am so down. Totally. Sounds awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, if you want to do all the shameless self promo, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, oh, yeah. Um, well, all of all of my socials, uh, besides I think YouTube, are goes by Dylan. So it's at goes by Dylan because that's the name that I go by. Um, and then YouTube, I think it's just Dylan Hardigan. You can just type in Dylan Hardigan into the search bar and, and my page should pop right up. Yes. But, you know, everything that I'm doing is on social flat platforms right now, um, whether it's releasing demos or doing interviews with cool people or, you know, just playing around and stuff like that. And I make stupid little TikTok videos every once in a while. Um, so yeah, all of, all of my social media is at goes by Dylan. Amazing. Super easy and creative. I love it. Um, one thing about TikTok, is your song featured on there? Like have people done dances to it or is it not featured yet? Uh, yes, it, it's featured on there. I don't think anybody's done any dances to it, but it's definitely on there somewhere. Well, you would, you, maybe you can start like a challenge, like a yeah. dance challenge or a lip sync challenge with your song. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. I don't understand TikTok for the life of me, so I unfortunately won't participate, but maybe I'll be able to figure it out. That's okay. Just I'm pretty sure I don't understand it also, <laughs> but somehow my videos make it on to like the oh. app. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like I, I'm 23. You're 24, right? Yes. I feel like it's almost like once you hit our age, it's harder to understand. It's the weirdest thing because like these 15 year olds like know every aspect of it and I go on there and I'm just bombarded. So I don't know if it's a generational no thing or what it is, but I feel you on that too. So yeah. very quick very quick yeah very fast paced uh short form of video so but if i figure it out of course i will let you know <laughs> yeah awesome well thank you so much um i like to end on this note it's kind of been a tradition over the past few months um just a quote or a saying that you want to leave the audience with oh okay i know that's so on the spot <laughs> No, that's okay. I, also, my dog is probably about to bark, just letting you know, because we have a delivery, so that's it's okay. very loud. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and get it out really quick. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, but I'm not going to quote him, because I can't. Uh, so I'm just going to say, enjoy the journey. I love that. That's so important. Enjoy the journey and not the destination. We'll enjoy the destination too, but yes, enjoy the journey. It's super important. All right. right. Hopefully, my dog didn't bark. I'm shocked. That's magic. That I li literally that has never happened. So maybe he knew we, I was doing an interview somehow, and he's like, "I'm gonna be considerate." So <laughs> he's walking around the corner like, "Hey, I didn't bark, so get me a treat." He probably is, and he already had treats today. So not today, Bert, not today. Oh, Bert. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much. Um, of course, I'll put this on YouTube and put all the um, links to your social media so everyone make sure to go check it out. Check out Dylan's music, follow on Instagram, all that fun stuff. Awesome. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon in person. If not, would love to do a follow-up interview in a couple months. Absolutely. I'm in California, like, pretty often, so. Oh, shouldn't... perfect. Okay, just hit me up then. All right, later. All right, bye, guys. Bye.